Some say I'm not able, I'm too young or I'm too old. I can't sing or teach, and no title do I hold, Lord, what can I do? Cause I want to do my part, and I want to help the hurting with all of my heart. I can pray until the walls come down, until there's healing all around. That's something I can do. I can pray in my secret place, calling on your name. That's something I can do. I can pray. friends they show no interest this world has gone so far we try our best to reach them but their hearts just seem so hard lord what can we do to help bring them back to you for this world is lost and dying and our words they don't get through we can pray Till the walls come down, until there's healing all around, that's something we can do. We can pray in our secret place, calling on your name, that's something we can do. We can pray until walls come down until there's healing all around that's something we can do we can pray well praise the lord open your bibles back up to john chapter number 15 tonight john chapter number 15 and uh, we have uh, been here a number of times and this will be our fourth time uh, coming back to this text, and uh, I'm uh, well assured that uh, if you have it by now, maybe you've read the entire chapter, and if not, then you're probably going to get all of it covered in some way, shape, or form. But uh, as you come back here, uh, I do want to be able to say and remind you that in John chapter number 15, uh, realistically, if you really want to ever capture everything that is said, I said this probably the first time that we were preaching out of this text, and I say it to you again that uh, you really need to be able to go through John 14, 15, and 16. There's a lot that is said in that scripture, and uh, there's a lot of teaching uh, that is there. But then to go into John 17, because that's actually where the Lord prays, and uh, I, I don't know if there's ever a time where uh, you're discouraged and you have a brother or a sister in Christ, if you want to say it that way, they come to you and they say, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you. Uh, this might sound unusual or weird to you, maybe. I, I, I don't know why it would, but uh, it's possibly, uh, possibly so. But I'd say to you, there's nothing more encouraging than to be able to read the words of the Lord Jesus as he prayed for you. And I'm telling you, John 17 uh, is an amazing, amazing chapter that will help you and encourage you on a regular basis. But as we look at that, I want to come here and I don't really want to look at the first uh, of this chapter. We've looked at uh, the illustration of the vine and the branches and we've done all that. But I want to come to the heart of the chapter because I believe in the heart of this chapter we really see the heart of Christ. We see something here that jumps off the page um, that's almost unusual that Jesus being the Son of God, uh, being God himself, it's almost unusual that he would say these words and he makes a statement. I want to pick up reading if we can <clears throat> in verse number 13. You follow along with me if you could. The Bible says this. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man to lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Notice there's an emphasis there. He didn't speak about him being our friend. He said, ye are my friend. And it's seen only if. 
In other words, there's a requirement that's there. We, we say we're a friend of Christ, but Jesus says if you're my friend, you're not going to be my friend because you say it. You're going to be my fa- friend because of what you do. Because the Bible says if you're my friend, he said, then if you do it, then you'll do whatsoever I command you. In other words, his friends truly obey him. The Bible says in verse number 14, he said, If you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, verse 15, henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. You notice that? I've ordained you. I've, I've chosen you. He said that you should go and bring forth fruit. There it is again. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name. Wondering why we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. That's because he is our mediator. The Bible says for we have one God, one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. That's why when we finish praying, it's not just an ending that we type on the end of a prayer. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. Whatsoever you ask in the name of Christ. He said that he may give it to you. And then he says these words, these things, I command you that you love one another. Now, I want you to go back, and if you notice this, if you're in the habit of just writing something down, or maybe circling or making a teaching of certain words in your Bible, I want you to look at verse number 13 and see that word, friends. I want you to go down to verse number 14, and again you see the word, friends. Go down to verse number 15, and you see the word again, where he says, that ye are my, called you friends. Three times the Lord says that you and I are his friends. I want to say this, that I have learned in studying this, that there is little that you and I understand about friendship, especially when we think the greatest friends we have are here on earth. You know, it's even got sad because I have learned that sometimes the people that we talk the most to are not the people that are here on earth and definitely not the Lord Jesus himself, But we've almost classified or understood friendship based upon what we have on Facebook. And I just want to say this, that if our definition and the greatest understanding we have of friends is friends that we have on Facebook, we have a pretty shallow definition of what a friend truly is. Jesus made it very plain that he was our friend and that we are his friend if we keep his commandments if you want to know what the bible says about friendship all you got to do is go through the book of proverbs and read it and i'm talking about over and over and over you'll understand what a true friend really is but it's in that text that it says that he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother and i just want to stop and say that i thank god that i have a friend in the lord jesus christ So I don't know what to do when days like today happen, when months like this month has happened, when years like this past year, or maybe just the morning you get up and something blindsides you, or maybe it's the middle of the night that nobody sees you and the weight that is on your chest. I'm glad that I have a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He understands me. He knows me. He can fix me. He can help me. And if I don't need to be fixed, praise God, He has the ability to guide me to what he wants to take me to because he is a true friend and God wants what's best for our life. So understanding friendship, we must understand what the Lord is teaching us about friends in this text. Now, friendship does not start this way. Friendship always starts this way. That's where a lot of times we we think that we can encounter people, we be close to them. And here in chapter number 15, he, he breaks it down because what he proves to us is that when we say that we are friends, that Jesus shows that he's not a friend that is a temporary friend. He is a lasting friend. Friendships are not something that come and go, listen to me, because you get mad at each other. If you're truly a friend that's been brought together in Christ, there's no reason, and you hear me well, There's no reason that you cannot continue to be friends as long as Christ is the Lord of your life. At all means, 
You and I should be able to humble ourselves, make ourselves get to a place where God can bring us back together because as we draw close to the Lord, we both will draw closer to one one together. So we see that the Lord is a lasting friend. And He's also a friend that's not just somebody that's here one day and gone the next day. It's not just a friend that's on the surface. No, it is a deep, deep, deep friend. And I must say, and I have to admit that I'm thankful. Because as we've already established and we've already discovered in John chapter number 15, we have seen this thing that now he is our friend. Let me tell you who he is. Well, we learn that he was Jesus. That means he was the son of God. We learn in this text that he's also God the Father. We talked about the husband. Then we also learned maybe a week or so ago, we talked about the Holy Ghost. So understand the greatness of the Trinity of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And here's what's so humbling. He calls me friend, and I'm thankful for that tonight. Do you understand that everything that we need in this life is found in God, in Christ, and the Holy Ghost leading us, and that's what true friendship is all about. So tonight, just for a few moments, I just want to speak on the subject, really, because I am his friend. Now, I want you to notice a few things. By calling us friend, the first thing I want you to see is this. He shows us our great privilege. I want to remind you tonight, it's a great privilege to be able to be called a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you look in this text, he says in verse number 15, he says, but I have called you friends. So it's a privilege because do you realize that at one time that we were considered enemies, but now he's saying that I call you friend? I mean, I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It was not required of him to call us friends. It was not a necessity that we had to be his friend. No, listen, he chose to be our friend. That's a privilege tonight. A lot of times we always consider these friendships to be so great. When the amazing thing to me is this, is these friendships has never done for us what that friendship has. And I'm telling you tonight, I encourage you to look unto the Lord Jesus because we're going to fail each other. We're going to let each other down. But he'll never leave you nor forsake you, never turn his back on you. He is a friend that's sticking closer to a brother. And listen to me, it is a privilege that he calls his friend. By the way, have you got over it? Have you got over it? I ask you these questions tonight. If you was to stand before God tonight, would you be considered his friend? Matter of fact, I'd say it this way. If you were to ask people in your life that work with you, your closest family, uh, maybe even your spouse, your home, would they consider Jesus to be your friend? And by the way, I'm not just talking about your friend, but your best friend. You ever notice, and I know we don't like to say we have cliques, but you ever notice that sometimes our best friend is the one sometimes we usually lean to? They're the ones we'll try to be able to appease. They're the ones we try to be able to keep unity with. They're the one we always try to be able to make happy. They're the one that will always agree to disagree until we figure out truth. It's amazing that we can do that for everybody else, but we don't, we don't always treat Jesus that way. And listen, I'm not talking about you. I, I'm going to be honest. It's convicted me. There, there's a lot of times that we allow the pressures of people. I, I, I said it last, uh, said it a little while ago. I was talking to my wife last night, and, and we were talking about some different things. And, and I wanted her to know, uh, as a pastor and her husband, what the Lord was getting ready to lead me through. And, 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 and I know that sometimes she might not understand that, but she's my help meet. And I don't talk to her about what God is trying to say. But when the Lord's beginning to do something, I, I open it up to her. And I remember saying these words to her that listen it's not going to be easy the things that God's going to be doing uh, just like when we make transitions and we do stuff and we preach at eight o'clock and in the back of a church that sometimes your closest friends don't always understand but at the same time what matters is not that we have a desire to please one another but ultimately that we have a desire to please him more than we do anybody else so I wonder tonight have you taken for granted the privilege that literally the Lord Jesus is your friend. The amazing thing to me is this. It's not just something that he said. I know that when we read the text, he said that you are my friends. But I want you to notice, it's something that he proven. The Bible says in verse number 13, notice these words. Greater love hath no man than this, than what? Than a man that laid down his life for his friend. Listen, he didn't just say you're my friend. He gave his life for you. Man, I thank the Lord for that. And I tell you by the way that he lived his life, By the way that he gave his life, it wasn't just something that he said to us. It was something that he proven to us. And it's amazing. It's a privilege because throughout all the scripture, we're able to be able to see how the Lord, how the Lord blesses people in the friendship of the Lord. I don't have time to be able to turn through all the scriptures, but I was going through different ones. 
when you go over to Luke chapter number 15 and you begin to read in that text and, and you know the story of the prodigal son literally they come to a place to where uh, they're, they're talking uh, about the prodigal son that walks off and, and you know the text where he comes and he's rehearsing in his mind listen he's literally rehearsing in his mind and he comes back and he comes to the father and he says I will arise so there he is he's rehearsing he says he's going to go to the father and he says these words he says and I will tell him I'm no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants so he's thinking about this thinking about this thinking about this and then the Bible says that when he comes to that place that he says when he rose he came in his father he said but when he was yet afar off his father saw him had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and he kissed him and the son said unto him Father, I sin against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father, listen, he interrupted him. Did you see the difference? He said, you're not going to call yourself a servant because you're not a servant. You're a son. Why? Because you are my friend. And can I tell you, there's times when you and I have walked away and we've been like the prodigal. And thank God, Jesus has never turned his back on us. Not one time has Jesus ever turned his back on us. It's a privilege to be a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ. In that same book, when you turn over a couple pages and you go to Luke chapter number 10, the Bible says that when you're reading here that you see, or Luke chapter number 7, the Bible says that the Lord is speaking, and as He speaks to them, He says these words. He says, and the Lord says, whereunto I shall liken unto men this generation, to what are they like? And then he begins to talk. They are like unto children sitting in a marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. So here the Lord is saying to them, Listen, you're a bunch of religious folk that are acting, listen to me, you're acting like a bunch of kids. That's what he's saying. I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but the Lord Jesus is looking at them saying, You're religious and you're acting like a bunch of kids. But then the Bible says in verse number 33, For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold the gluttonous man and the wine bibber and the friend, there it is, of publicans and sinners. What I'm trying to tell you is the very criticism they gave to Christ was the very compliment that they gave to Christ because he says when you are sitting around acting religious and acting like a bunch of babies, he said, I want you to know that I am a friend to sinners. I'm glad tonight to know Jesus is my friend. And I'm telling you, it's a privilege. We should be on our way to hell with no hope. And here we are consumed with today and the activities and all the things that are transpiring. But at the end of the day, no matter what happens in our life, no matter what happens in our home, no matter what happens in this country, one thing will never change if you're saved by the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been covered with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a friend in Jesus and it's a privilege tonight. It's a privilege to be able to call friend. You go back, it goes a little further and it gets a little deeper. In Matthew chapter number 26, I hope I'm not boring you tonight. It encourages me to be able to see these things. In Matthew chapter number 26, it goes deeper. Now this is a time, I'm going to be honest with you, when I see the compassion of Christ. This is a time when I see the humility of Christ. This is a time where I really understand the depth of his friendship. I want you to listen to what the Bible says, and you know the story here. In Matthew chapter number 26, picking up in verse number 50. Then cometh he to his disciples, and he saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man, listen, is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So you know where we are? Jesus is at the place right now where they're getting ready to be able to take him. He understands what's about to happen. And the Bible says this, Rise, and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. He already knows. He already sees what's about to happen, and he knows who he is that's about to betray him. The Bible says in verse 47, And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, there he is, one of the twelve came, and with a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people, now that he betrayed him uh, and gave, him a, gave them signs, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith uh, he came to Jesus and said, Hell, master, and kissed him. Listen to this. He betrayed him. He was a traitor. You and I would call him that. 
But I want you to listen to what Jesus calls him in verse number 50. And Jesus said unto him, friend. Now listen, there have been a lot of times we told the Lord we would do something and we messed up on it. There have been a lot of times that we sat around and we deserved a whole lot worse off than what we got. But I'm glad that no matter what, that we got a friend in Jesus. Even when we fall short, we mess up, we have a friend. Listen, I know Judas might not have been his friend, but he was still a friend to Judas. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't just say he was a friend. He proved he was a friend. And I want to say tonight that I'm thankful. I'm thankful tonight that I do have a friend in Jesus. I'm thankful tonight that I can tell you about my friend named Jesus. I'm thankful tonight when I fall short and when things are tough and I'm not able to be able to help you and touch you and fix you, that I can tell you about the greatest friend, listen to me, the greatest friend that I've ever had, and it's in the Lord Jesus. You say, preacher, I need hope. What better hope can you get? I need help. What better help can you get? I mean, what do you want? I mean, what is it that you need? Listen, he is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And he shows us by calling us friend that without question, it is a great privilege that he calls us friend. Not only that, but by calling us friend, he shows us of our great purpose. He shows us our great purpose. Notice in verse number 16 what the Bible says. The Bible says, the Bible says, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. I want to tell you tonight, you didn't choose Jesus, he chose you. I'm not saying that I'm Calvinist. I'm not saying whosoever shall, shall call upon them, Lord, ain't true. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, he chose you. He, he died for you before you ever accepted him. He died for you. That way, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Y'all with me tonight? So he says these words, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Notice these words, and ordained you. Most of us know what an ordination is. It's where they come, they lay hands on somebody, a preacher, a deacon, somebody that's in a position of a church. And what they do is they lay hands on them and and literally they, they, they take it, they observe their life, they approve of them to be able to set forth, to be able to do something. But can I tell you something tonight? You might not be a deacon and you might not be a pastor, but I want to tell you according to this text right here, the Bible says, for you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Notice this and ordained you, I want to tell you that every single one of us, if you are saved, you are ordained of God. To do what? Well, that's amazing. I want you to notice what the Bible says. That ye should go and bring forth what? Fruit. In other words, what the Lord is saying is there is a purpose of why you and I are saved. There, there's a reason why He is our friend. In other words, just because we come to church, He's not our friend just so we come here and soak up all the goodness and the grace and the mercy and all that other stuff. He's not our friend so we can sit around and be lazy. No, listen to me. He's our friend and it's a privilege and there's a purpose and that's that we go out and we tell people about Jesus. Bring forth fruit. I want to ask you, what fruit's in your hands? Where's your fruit at? It's all fine and dandy. We talk about Jesus. Yeah, I know he's my friend. Praise God. I know he's my friend, preacher. Hallelujah, he's my friend. Okay, well, this friend, there's a purpose to be his friend. So if we are as appreciative and thankful of his friendship as we say we are, where is your fruit? Now, I'm not talking about love, joy, and peace. I'm not talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Where's the people who got led to the Lord because of you? Where's the people still coming to church because of you? Where, where's the people's lives that impacted because of you? I mean, and I listen, and if all we're doing is talking about what God done five and ten years ago, then we ain't truly trusting God today. Amen. Amen. Preach on, preacher, preach on. It's a sad day to be able to stand before God and say, well, I remember when I was 24 and 35 and 46 and all, and I, you know, and then all of a sudden say, God said, what about the last 10 years? Amen. He said, he said, there's a purpose why you're my friend. And by the way, it's a privilege. Can I get a witness right there? It's a privilege that he calls us friend. 
So he is telling us, listen, literally, there's a purpose for you to be able to go out and to be able to tell people about Jesus. Let me give you another scripture here in Luke chapter number 10. I hope you're all right tonight. There's a lot of Bible. I apologize, but I don't apologize. The Bible says this in Luke chapter number 10. In verse number 21, listen to this. It says, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Now, let me stop there. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, disciples, I want to tell you something. I didn't choose you and call you friend because you were educated. I, I didn't call you friend because you had something to offer me. He, he said, it's not that you're the, the top of uh, of the food chain if you want to say it that way no it's not because you're worthy that I'm calling you friend it's because I love you it's because I love you the Bible says in verse number 22 all things are delivered to my uh, to me and my father and no man knoweth who the son is but the father and who the father is but the son and he who and he to whom the father of uh, the son will reveal him notice this and he turned uh, uh, him unto his disciples and said privately. I'm glad when the Lord talks to me privately. Amen. I'm glad that I'm so close to him that he tells me some things that he don't tell others. Anybody else ever go through those things? You ever had those moments where it's like, man, that's a good friend. Listen, some of your best friends will call and say, hey, i got to tell you something. Maybe, and it might not even be gossip. We'll be spiritual for a minute. Hey, it might be, it might be something good. I just got to tell you what the Lord did. It's just a private conversation. Don't it just encourage you? I'm glad when the Lord does that. Sometimes you're reading this word, and listen, nobody else is up. Maybe it's early in the morning house, and he just, the Holy Ghost just speak to you in a certain way. Man, praise the Lord for that. I mean, there's a, there's a purpose for it. But it goes on. This is what the Bible says. He said, turn to him and said privately, blessed are the eyes, notice this, which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired, listen to this, to see those things which you see, and have not seen them. And to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. In other words, what he's saying is there's some things that you know about that other people will never know. And there's a purpose for it. And that purpose is for you to be able to tell other people about the Lord Jesus Christ and to be able to understand that it's to be able to bring forth fruit. Listen, serving Jesus is not about your stuff. It's not about your car. It's not about your name. It's not about your money. It's not about that. Serving Jesus, there's a purpose. It's about the fruit. What fruit do you have tonight? What fruit do you have? I'll give you my third thing tonight and I'll be done. I'm calling this friend. Not only do we know it's a privilege and we have a great purpose, but I'll give you this and I'll close. He shows us his great promise. Back over in John chapter number 15. You know what's amazing as you turn your Bible back over there? We've been in this text for four weeks. And do you understand you can pick it back up tomorrow and God's going to give you something fresh? Listen, I mean, you hear what I'm trying to I mean, the amazing thing to me about the Bible. I mean, we've talked about the Son. We've talked about Jesus. We've talked about God. We've talked about purging. we talked about the Holy Spirit. And now we're talking about Him being His friend. You're going to get up tomorrow. You read this text. And, and the Word of God will say something to you completely all over again. And it will change your life. It's amazing to me how powerful and how quick the Word of God is. I want you to notice what the Bible says, if you will. Notice here, he says a great promise. The Bible says in verse number 16 of chapter 15, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should, there it is, remain. Should remain. The Bible says, And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, that he may give it to you. There's the promise. See, the promise is, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that he shall make, give it to you. In other words, he gives us the secret to prayer. But can I tell you this? It's by obedience. It's only by obedience. Did you notice when we were talking about the purpose of God in that text that we talked about? He gave us two commands in verse number 16. That ye should go and that we should bring. In other words, that's two commands. If you're really a friend of Christ, there's two things we should be doing. We should be going, and we should be bringing. In other words, we must go forward. 
We can't sit around and be stagnant. We can't sit around and wait for something else to happen. That's not what we can do. God says, if you're my friend, listen, you're always advancing. You're always advancing. No matter what it seems like, no matter how hard it is, no matter 2020, listen, you and I got to be tired of talking about it. God is still God. Jesus is still the answer. Holy Ghost still lives inside of you. We must go and do something for God. And he said there's a promise that's here. Whatsoever you ask, whatever it is. He said, you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. But he said, only and only, you're my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Now, that means it's conditional. So I want to ask you tonight, and I'll say this in closing. Somebody come to the piano. How's your friendship with the Lord? How's your relationship with your best friend? And I can say that without hesitation. Because I know who he is. And whether we call him our best friend or not, he is. He is. He is your best friend. Not your spouse. Not your children. Not your parents. He. He is your best friend. I wonder tonight, with him being your best friend, if you consider it a privilege, what are you doing for the Lord? I, 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 know, days are t- I know days are tough. I, I know there's struggles. I know there's news that we don't want to hear. But can I, tell you, can I tell you some news that ain't changed? He's still your best friend. I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm not trying to be shallow with it. I'm telling you, we're coming to a place to where there's so many things that we neglect in our life. But the last thing that we must neglect is the fact that we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask this in closing. If tonight was the last night, She began to play. I'll be done. And you and I had to stand before God. And we have to give an account for our friendship. And there's only two things that he said of us. Three. Number one, you do whatsoever I I command you to do. Number two, that you go. And number three, that you bring. Listen to me. If we had to stand before God, in the midst of this country being sideways today, Jesus is coming back, friend. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming back. We're going to stand before God. But if it happened to be tonight, how would we be considered his friend? How would our obedience do? What what would we do different between now and midnight? If it happened at midnight tonight, would would we do something that God's been asking us to do instead of using all the craziness as an excuse? Would we go somewhere? Will we be more interested in bringing fruit to Him than we are laying up treasures for ourselves? Y'all help me now. Y'all help me. There's a lot of things that you and I can't answer, and there's a lot of things that you and I don't know. But the amazing thing to me is this. We talked about, I guess it was last week. I don't know. I say so much sometimes I don't remember what I say. I could tell you the Bible that's in it. (laughs) I remember in Genesis 1 we were talking about From the very beginning, we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You see God that was there, and then you go over to Colossians, and it says Jesus being what? Being the Creator. So we understand both of them were in the very beginning. And the Bible says that the Spirit moved upon the waters. The same God that was in the very beginning of everything, always has been. It's the same God tonight that calls you friend. And yet we sit around, we murmur, we complain, we worry. When at the end of the day, the greatest friend we could ever have is on our side. He knows what we're doing. So for a few moments tonight, I want you to examine your friendship, your relationship. And see if you're doing the three things that he's asked you to do. Number one, commanding, whatever it is in obedience. Number two, are you going and doing what he's asked you to do? Are you still busy for the Lord? Not for church, not for your family. Are you still busy for the Lord? Number three, what fruit do you have? And by the way, partial obedience is complete disobedience. You say, well, I got one and two, or I got two and three. I got one and three. Yeah, but if you ain't doing all three, you can't really say you're being obedient. 
Our Father, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for being our best friend. Thank you, Lord, for calling. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to know that you've tuned in. And I pray that today that the word of God that was shared will be a blessing to you. If somehow, some way that the Lord has spoke to your heart, and maybe you're uh, sitting where you are and you don't know for sure that you're saved by the grace of God and you've ever trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, then I want you to know that the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible makes it very plain. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how do I get saved? You have to trust in Christ and Christ alone. Repent of your sin and then know as the Bible says where Jesus says, I am the way. And I pray that today that that would be your desire to be able to seek out for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to trust Him as a Lord and Savior. If you do that today and you repent of your sins and you take Him as your Savior, would you do us a favor and contact our church office at 336-788-0551? We would love to be able to speak with you. We would love to be able to encourage you, maybe be able to help you find a local church no matter where you are today and maybe even possibly disciple you. So we want to say thank you so much, and we are definitely going to be praying for you in this ministry that our church has. If you know you're saved, and maybe the Lord spoke to you in a different way, and there's something heavy on your heart, again, that same number, if you can contact us, we'll be so thankful to be able to reach out and be able to speak with you. But again, on behalf of the church and myself, thank you so much, and may God bless you.